packs of the sandwich, pushes it down so you can press the numbers. So obviously when you start pumping your hydrogen fuel, you're going to get leaks outside. So and there are sealant rings, which I'll show you in a sec. Temperature of the actual cell itself, because obviously we want to get the, temp the temperature of the cell up to an operating point, and at which we can maintain. Because obviously with the actual reaction itself, the hydrogen reaction, is that you form heat, and uh, this essentially helps kickstart the reaction. I'll explain this in lines. So basically we have a hydrogen in, hydrogen out, we have an air in, air out, and we have a water in and out. So the water there is just for coolant, hydrogen is your fuel, and air is your redox reaction. So I'll just take it apart so you can see the actual individual layers. So you can see there, this, this plate just extrudes out once you fill it up with air and acts as the sandwich on the top. Just a, a perspex glass. So this here is your connection, so you'll get your potential uh, across the, the two layers here. So this layer here, you can see there, that's just the coolant water layer. And you can see there with the actual sealant rubber rings there, that obviously when you press down will act as a sandwich between the layers. So this next layer, this is the hydrogen layer. The channels themselves are a lot thinner. Therefore, you can maximize the actual contact itself. And again, it's just replicated again on the other side. So you've got your five layers on the other side there. And then this here is actually the MIA. So membrane electrode assembly. Just gently mix up. So there in the middle there is your membrane and your catalyst. And again, hydrogen layer on the bottom. So what we do here is we pressurize it up and then we uh, open up the valve to see whether or not there's leaks. And basically if it, if it leaks falls within the category, I think the category for us is like uh, 0.2 PSI in per minute. So if it's less than that, we're okay. But at the moment, we're having leaks. So basically, what we've got to do is check all the connections all the way along to find, obviously, somewhere there'll be a slight small hole, and obviously the gas leaks out. And as you know, hydrogen is very, very flammable, so therefore, it'd be an unsafe environment if we were to pump hydrogen through and if it's going to leak. So the hydrogen just comes out of a regulator on that back wall there. And if you follow the lines all the way around, it goes to that store cupboard at the front where one of these hydrogen gas tanks will be situated with a regulator on the top of it also. It doesn't matter how much you use because what's going to happen is it's going to get uh, pumped out of there through the cell and then it's just going to go straight back in. So the volume in here will just be exactly the same minus what's collected in the piping in the fuel cell. And then this is our feed pipe. And that can just get placed in the pump here. And it's important that you've got enough solution just to make sure that your feed or your input pipe is obviously completely submerged, otherwise you're going to end up pumping air into your system as well. So usually what I do is I turn the, the first thing I do is I just get the system running by turning the pump on because you need to leave the pump for about 10 minutes or so just to reach steady state and then after about that we'll start taking recordings. A uh, good way to know that the pump is working as well is usually you can see since this is submerged initially the pipes will be full of air as well so usually you can see some bubbles coming out start with. Yeah, so this is just air that was in the tubes before. Yeah. Okay, so that's the bubble stop, so it should hopefully be flowing. There you go, you can see that we've got, this is just our methanol solution, just getting recycled. We'll connect it up to the anode and cathode of the fuel cell. And what it's going to do is it's going to vary the current that it draws out of the fuel cell, and it will measure the voltage. And you can see the power stats actually linked up to our P 
PC here, and it's going to make all the recordings to a program called Power Suite. A lot of time I forget what one's anode and what one's a cathode, but an easy way to figure it out is once you get a reading, if you've got a negative voltage, then you can switch around. Yeah. Cell enable, and it just makes sure that the power starts actually talking to the fuel cell that we're using. It should light up. Okay, and then on our software, Power Speed, what we're doing is we've got there's lots of different templates and experiments that you can uh, perform on. Suite. So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to make a polarization curve so that we've got. Uh, this is the area because of course we're putting it into a uh, current event so it's going to be an area as well. So the actual scan definition. So this is saying where we're going to start the scan, where we're going to finish the scan, and what are the incremental steps that are going to be used for the scan as well. So this is all to do with uh, potential. Click finish. So all it's doing is it's just essentially loading up the power stuff and we've still got this red light so it means it's still talking to the, the fuel cell so it should be fine. That's the power stat all, all loaded up and it gives us a sort of uh, pre-reading of what it's reading out of the, the fuel cell of current and voltage. So it should be around about 0.5 kilovolts or so. And we can just hit run and it gives us an option of different cells. So the Default, or the default option is using the DC dummy cell. Uh, we're wanting it to use the cell that we've got connected, so it's the external cell. So we just click use external cell. Okay. And then it starts collecting data. We heat it up to different temperatures and then see how that affects the polarization curve. So as you can see here, as the temperature is increasing, we get an increased performance in our polarization curve. It's only up until a certain point because this is our 70 degrees here, but then when we go to 80 degrees, it actually just stays roughly in the same place. And the lower sort of current density is, it's actually a decrease in performance. So with temperature, there's sort of a sweet spot of where you need to get the optimal temperature for the best performance out of your cell. And then on this side, this is these are some other polarization curves. And what Jason was mentioning earlier about why we don't use just a hundred percent methanol solution is because so here we've got five percent, but this shows that as you increase the concentration of the methanol solution, it actually increases the performance and again up until a certain point and then it decreases the performance of the cell. So we've got uh, 0.25 and then a 0.5, a 1 mole, a 2 molar and then the 4 molar drops the performance all the way back down to the, actually the worst performing polarization curve out of the lot of them. So again concentration does have a huge effect on the fuel cells but only up until a certain point. 